It's taken 53 hours for the milk to be finished. Hey guys, it's Megan from You Go To Be Kidding. We added a freeze dryer to our uh, preserving method. So this is a Harvest Right large freeze dryer. We've had it for a few weeks now. We've run several batches on it. And so we wanted to give you an initial kind of review of what we've done, how we've liked it, whether we've had any issues. And so join us. I'm gonna show you what we've done so far and kind of show you our new toy. So when you first get your freeze dryer, you have to um, set it up, make sure you get it plugged in. And there's all sorts of really great YouTube videos about that setup and unboxing. And so that's not what I wanted to do today. I just wanted to talk you through a couple things that happened. So first off, they have you run a bread test. They have you put bread in the machine and run a cycle just to kind of burn off any manufacturing odors or anything. Um, and just to make sure the machine is working. So we did that test and it finished Normally it actually completed the cycle, uh, but the whole time, we, you know, we were coming down to check on it. We we're excited about a new thing. And um, I had read either in the manual or in some YouTube videos I'd been watching, because there's all sorts of great YouTube stuff. Um, I had a number that the vacuum was supposed to pull the pressure down to. And so I was watching for that number and it didn't get down there. And so online I'd read that it was supposed to get down to 400 um, M tours. That's the vacuum measure. And it never got below 600. And so I was worried it wasn't working. Um, I started looking for other videos about what if your machine, you know, didn't get down to the right M tours and I couldn't find anything on that. And um, so it finished, it completed. So I actually gave Harvest Right a call and that's my first um, really great thing is that their customer service has been awesome. I called them and they um, were gracious. They gave me a few tips or tricks. I think I called them before the cycle was over. No, I called them when the cycle was done and I was trying to run a vacuum pump test. You can actually go in the menu and just turn on the vacuum and see what it pulls down to. And it didn't seem to be getting very low. So I called them and she assured me that if my bread test ran normally and the process completed and the bread was all dry, which it was, that it was fine. And that the pump just has a little bit of a wear in uh, cycle to it. So the pump is down here on the floor next to my machine. And, um, and that's been true. So I've run five batches now and I just wanted to, uh, kind of let you know, and put you at ease. If you were worried about the same thing, um, the machine has gotten stronger each time the vacuum pump. And so it has pulled a, uh, tighter vacuum, uh, a lower pressure reading, uh, on every batch we've done since. And now it's well into the four hundreds and I definitely don't have anything to worry about. We have not had any vacuum issues. So that was the first thing that I almost knew too much information and it caused me some worry when the machine was working great. So that was one big thing. Customer service was fantastic and I'm, it was super easy to get a hold of them. It was not a long hold time or anything like that. So that's just a really encouraging thing on an expensive machine like this to know that customer service is just a call away. So we've done all kinds of different things. It's super fun to run through and figure out what you want to put in here. We did a first batch with some frozen fruits because uh, if the food is already frozen when it goes in, it takes, it's a little bit faster. Um, otherwise the machine has to freeze the food and then starts the drying process. So we've done frozen fruits. We've done a load with some fresh fruits, which included uh, apples and bananas and some uh, Satsuma oranges. We've done a batch with like ice cream sandwiches and uh, ice cream. And we're getting ready to do our first candy batch just for fun. Um, and we have really enjoyed the process. It's different, but it is going to be such a game changer for food preservation. Uh, right now I have some milk in it. My mom wanted me to run uh, some milk for her for long-term storage. And so that's what's in here. It just finished up. I'm going to get this bagged up um, in Mylar bags and set this aside for her so she has some long, long-term storage. Um, the favorites around here have definitely been the fruit. So the kids will eat up any of the frozen, any of the fruits. Uh, the fresh ones seem to do a little better than frozen, um, but that could be me getting used to the machine. So when you run the cycle, it is auto sensing how dry it is. 
And then when it's done, it gives you an option to check on the food and then add more time if you think it needs it. And so me learning that if it's still sticky or cold, I need to add more time. I've seen some great tips about weighing your trays. I have not done that yet. Um, but just kind of learning what finished food looks like. That's been a little bit of a learning curve. But five batches in, I, that's no, no big deal at all. So the kids love the bananas. Uh, we've done a bunch of bananas and the kids plow through them and it's fantastic because bananas on the counter, they, you, you know, are, you've seen the memes. It's either you buy bananas and the kids scarf them all. So you buy bananas again and then they eat none of them and they all rot on the counter. And banana bread is great, but it, man, it sure would be nice to just keep the bananas. And so running bananas through here, the kids love them as a snack and they don't go bad. My favorite has been the fresh apples. Um, I love apples, but I'm kind of a, a fair weather apple fan. Uh, the texture really matters to me. And then sometimes they're too cold. I don't know. Um, and so a freeze dried apple, I have really, really enjoyed those. And then you can eat just like two pieces of an apple and not have to cut up a whole apple. So that's been really awesome. That's been my favorite. Um, we did ice cream, which was super fun. Um, and then we also tried ice cream sandwiches. Those came out cool, but, um, the quality of the food going in affects the quality of the food coming out. So, uh, we bought some really, really cheap, just Walmart, uh, ice cream sandwiches. And to be honest, we taste tested them a little bit before they went in the machine and they kind of just tasted like cardboard. So when they came out, they tasted like freeze dried cardboard. Um, so those were a, uh, a wasted batch, but you learn. So the quality of the food you put in there definitely matters. Um, we put in a, a better ice cream with some clean ingredients um, and that came out really good. So we'll definitely be trying the ice cream again. Uh, we are going to do some candy. We don't normally eat a ton of candy, but um, Skittles and Starburst are supposed to come out super cool. Um, and we even have some caramels to try and it's always worth trying. That's the beauty. Once you have the machine, um, you can kind of do all different things. We're already thinking about what types of things we could do to sell. Um, Tennessee laws are great about cottage things. We can, any shelf stable food can be sold. So that's definitely an option to help recoup some of the cost. Uh, but really it might just be fun to share with friends and family. Uh, the best resource I've come up with so far is um, a YouTube channel called Live Life Simple. I'll make sure to uh, link them. I, I don't know them. I'm not affiliated with any with them at all, but um, they have a wealth of resources on the freeze dryer. He clearly has been freeze drying for a long time. He has great information. His videos are awesome and easy to understand and to cover just about every topic you would need to know. And they even have a store where they sell freeze drying supplies. Um, they sell really cool um, plastic uh, stackers so you can stack the trays on top of each other. They sell Mylar bags and things to store food in, but um, I'll link their store so you can get uh, anything you might need if you have a freeze dryer. But that has been a huge uh, resource and a huge help. So I'm really thankful that they have content out there that I can look up things when I have a question about my freeze dryer. Um, in terms of the actual freeze dryer itself, so we have a large from Harvester. It's, uh, their new ones, I guess, are the Pro. So this is a large Pro. It has six trays. It holds a ton of food, which is great for our large family and for dealing with garden produce. One of the big reasons we wanted a freeze dryer was to help us preserve our milk. Um, our goats are drying up. I think today was probably my last day milking them, maybe tomorrow morning, and then I'm done. And so we are out of milk for the winter. I'm buying some milk from a local farmer, which is great. But next year I will have the chance to preserve our milk in here. And then I won't have to worry about that added cost over the winter of buying raw milk from a farmer. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the machine comes with everything you need. It comes with oil and a filter for the oil. It comes with bags and a sealer and oxygen absorbers. Uh, the only thing extra we bought was we bought a second set of trays and they're super helpful. I will admit that I'm not quite utilizing them like I would need to. Uh, I really am just using them so far to help delay the washing of the first batch. Um, but for example, these are done. This is all milk. Uh, it's done. 
and the machine has to defrost here in a minute. So I'm going to take these out. I'm going to take them upstairs and bag them up. And then um, I could just wash them and reload them while the machine is defrosting. And then as soon as the machine is ready, I could put those new trays in without needing a second set of trays. The real benefit of a second set of trays would be as if I was efficient, I would have the second set of trays loaded up already. Uh, the next batch we have going in are more bananas because the kids eat those so fast. Um, so it would have been awesome if I had been with it and gotten the bananas all cut up and in the freezer to pre-freeze before they go in here. Um, but I didn't get to that. So that's the real benefit of a second set of trays is having a set in the freezer ready with stuff so I can pull these out and then get them out and get the machine defrosted and then restart the next batch. So this is my initial review of our Harvest Right freeze dryer. We are loving it so far. It is going to be a great tool on our farm. This is winter. We don't even have a ton of garden produce to do. Uh, we were able to get our last batch of tomatoes and jalapenos in here. Um, and they're awesome. So I'm actually using them as a powder to add to cheese sauces or just sprinkle on eggs or whatever. I put some tomato powder in um, like a stew, not a stew, a roast that I made in the Instant Pot the other night. There's so many options. There's so many things you can do. It really feels like it's never ending. Um, I have to admit this is far less intimidating than canning, which I am a, a newbie canner and I've done a few things and I'll continue to can some things for sure, but this is going to be um, so helpful when it comes to uh, summer produce. So I'm really looking forward to that. But this is something that we have. Uh, I'm sure that I will share about different batches of things that I do, but I know that there are a ton of videos online about all the different goodies you can run through this machine and all sorts of helpful tutorials. So I just wanted to give you my thoughts after a few batches in. I uh, hope that helps if you're considering it or not for your homestead. Um, or honestly, even if you don't have a homestead, something like this can help you buy in bulk and be able to preserve it um, without... I don't know, without canning or without a garden, you can still use a freeze dryer. So thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy and we will see you next week.